Welcome to another episode of the Quick Corners Book Corner. This is part of the CGI's. <laughs> no, not computer generated images. I said that already. Christmas gift ideas. You'll see my guest bio right after this. Author guest, guest author. Either way works. Uh, please join us and learn more about her and her book. See you in a bit. Welcome to the Quip Corners Book Corner, Laurie. Thank you so much for having me, Ada. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm glad that we can do this and technology definitely is helping us. Yes, it is. Thank you. So we're going to talk about your book that I remember you said was set in the 1980s. The 1980s. That's right. That's Which feels, feels, it feels like that should be more recent, but that's a long time ago now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So before we dig into the book, why the 1980s? I chose the 1980s for a couple of reasons. The first was because I was born in the 70s and much of my childhood was the 80s. And so I, I have some great memories from the 80s, fun memories. But beyond that, I wanted kids today to find themselves in a time that there, there was no technology, really. Um, no video games to speak of, certainly no internet, um, no cell phones, a simpler, a simpler time. I know my kids, my kids often ask me about what it was like to grow up without those things. And mm -hmm. they're, they're a little bit fascinated that we could have ever survived. So that's, those are the two reasons I thought a, a simpler time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was a lot of my childhood. So yeah. it was yeah. fun to write in that setting. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, because two things popped in my head. The first being that when I was writing my third book this my third book which is 101 quicks and quotes for tweens teens and 20s um i wanted to write from that age you know it was like yeah how did i feel at that age and things like that and it was interesting because i got my children to uh, be my um, alpha readers, you know, to okay. proofread it for me. Yeah, uh, one, you know, one of them was reading it, and he, he goes, "Mommy, you're sounding too much like an adult." <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> you know, and and so it, it's great that you're trying to, you know, um, shall I say, import yes. that time into this time, yes. and you know, to your point about the fascination about how did you survive, right? In our right. home, we try and play a lot of board games and things like that to say, look, you don't have to watch TV to have fun. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Nice. Yes. <laughs> nice. Nice. So how um, easy or difficult was it for you to dig in and bring this forth? Surprisingly easy. You know, I... I would sit down to write a scene, mm -hmm. having thought it through in my head. I knew what I wanted to say. I knew what I wanted my main character to feel and, and what I wanted her to experience in that particular scene. But when I would sit down to write it, often something entirely different would come out. It, it, and it would just, it was like a little living person and I was watching her and I was just typing what I saw. And it was surprisingly easy to, to go back in time, mm -hmm. you know, those 40 years or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and remember, but then to create and mm. to, to put her into that time frame and into that time period was really fun. And just, to, I felt often like I was watching her. What is she doing now? And then I would have the joy of writing it down Aww. and, and. The real joy came then when I would read it aloud to my children and get mm -hmm. their feedback. 
was really fun. Okay. So give us examples of their feedback, please. Well, my daughter was my biggest champion it, through all of this. Um, <laughs> she would always beg for more. So when I come to the end of what I wrote, she her feedback was always, what happens next? <laughs> so she inspired me to keep going and to not give up, to finish. Um, she loved it. And, and she was my first proofreader. She, she's really gifted in language arts and she can spot a missing comma or, mm. a, you know, a typo yeah, pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So she, she was a great help in that way. Yeah. My yeah. son was a, a little old for the age, you know, the age of the book. But yeah. He was equally enthusiastic about it and supportive and, uh, he loved to hear the book too. And mm. it was really delightful when I would write a scene that I wanted to be humorous mm -hmm. if they would laugh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if if I like, could oh. read it, right. <laughs> yeah. I knew, I knew if it landed, if they laughed and I knew if it fell flat, if they kind of looked at me. <laughs> like, was I supposed but, to understand that? <laughs> right, right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that was great fun. It's beautiful, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Okay, so I guess let's tag along with your daughter who said, what happened next? Why don't you read something from your book to us, please? Sure, I would love to read something. I'm going to read from a, the middle of the book. Mm -hmm. So here we go. One day while enjoying my cozy teacher restroom hideout, I wiped those perfume claws on my wrists. I took a big whiff, mmm, flowers. I rubbed them on my ankles too. I stared in the mirror and made a fish face at my reflection. My perm was wearing off, but my hair still resembled broken bed springs. I took a brush from the middle drawer and brushed my hair 100 strokes. I smiled as I turned my head from side to side. Better, I wonder what else they have in the drawers. As I reached for the bottom drawer, I heard the bathroom door swoosh open. High heels were clicking toward me. I shoved the drawer shut and ducked into a stall to hide. I crouched on the toilet seat with my feet tucked up under me, trying to be silent. The clicking heels came closer and stopped in the stall next to me. I waited while high heels took her time. My left foot started to go numb. I tried silently rubbing life back into it, but I lost my balance and bonked into the toilet paper, which broke free and rolled under my stall into hers. Silence. Then an uncomfortable cough, followed by a kick of a heel, and my toilet paper came rolling back. I didn't dare pick it up until high heels left. Finally, she flushed, and after a ridiculous amount of hand washing, she clicked out into the hall. High heels. What a name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I definitely would like to know more. <laughs> I guess we'll have to find out when we get the book. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> nice. Nice. So, Thank you. we jumped into the book. Yes. The background. What's the title? Uh, the title is The Year of Penny. And it follows a fourth grade girl named Penny through her school year. And it begins with her strong desire to be popular. She's kind of a friendless, lost little soul. And she, she has a goal and it's to be the most popular girl. And we see her striving and finding many catastrophes along the way. Um, and learning some valuable lessons mm. about what's really important in life. What's really yeah. important yeah. is popularity, what I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the readers will ask some questions and I hope what they ask is, did she respond in the right way? Okay. How could she have responded better maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did she do right? What did she not do so well yeah yeah nice nice yeah. I, I noticed when you held up the book it seemed to be matching your curtain and I was like oh was that on purpose <laughs> no 
That must be a coincidence. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. So, you know, so the thing is, you know, a couple of people will be like, okay, this sounds like a good Christmas gift. Sure. But some other people would wonder, so what do you really want the readers to take away from this book, please? The readers. Okay. I think what I would like the readers to take away from the book is a few things. Mm -hmm. um, the value of true friendship. Okay. Um, what it looks like to turn the other cheek. That's mm -hmm. a hard thing to do. We, mm -hmm. we live in a world where I think the predominant sentiment is sort of a you wronged me and I want my justice Yeah. rather than walking the way of forgiveness. Mm. And um, I think we learn a little bit from the main character. What does it look like to kind of take the higher road mm -hmm. and, tur and turn the other cheek? Yeah. And that's a hard thing to do for children. It's a hard thing to do for adults. Yes. And is. I think that's an important lesson to learn that the consequences of retaliation are not good mm -hmm. but sometimes we can put out a lot of fires by turning the other cheek mm. so I, I would like readers to walk away with that I would like readers just to walk away with the joy of an uplifting fun story there's a lot of children's literature now that I think comes with kind of an agenda in a worldview that's being pushed on kids. And I wanted my book to just be a simple, sweet story that you can feel good handing to your child and letting them read, that you can feel good that they might copy the main character and that's an okay thing. Mm. I wanted to show a positive relationship with Penny and her parents. What does nice. that look like? Yeah. Um, it's it's okay to talk to your parents. That's a good thing. Let them mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Uh, I wanted kids to see a positive example of a relationship with your mom and a positive example of a relationship with your dad. And, and what can a happy, healthy marriage look like when your yeah. mom and dad are showing that and yeah. in, in being an example of that? And yeah. It's beautiful. And those are all gems that we need at times like this, right? Yeah, because I think we it, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because it almost feels like, well, we should always be at loggerheads. No, there's right. enough love to go around. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Thank sure. you so, so much for yes. um, joining me in the Quick Corners Book Corner. I love I, it. <laughs> I'm going to make a request. Sure. You know, you talked about what you want, um, you know, the children to take away, you know, the mm -hmm. healthy family relationships and things like that. And I'd like to ask, if you don't mind, if you can just say a word of prayer for sure. the young ones and for families, please. Oh, I would love to. Absolutely. Lord God, we thank you so much for family and that you created it, Lord. It was your idea mm -hmm. to bring about family, Lord. I thank you for that. What a gift it is. I pray for all of the young readers who are out there and might pick up my book, Lord, that they would be blessed mm -hmm. in being drawn into your idea of family, Lord, mm -hmm. and drawn into your idea of forgiveness and friendship, Lord, all good things you created. Mm -hmm. I pray, Lord, that that just there would be a wonderful spirit mm -hmm. of your love and kindness and yeah. friendship and goodness and the good gifts you've given us, Lord. And mm -hmm. I pray that for all of the readers out there mm -hmm. in your precious name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Ada. It was wonderful to speak with you. I enjoyed it too. Yeah. And blessings on your, your book sales and Amen. all of the things you have your hands in, all the different ministries. It's wonderful. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And you too. God bless Thank you. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. You. You're welcome. Yeah. 
Um, let's just say a word of prayer before we start. Oh, thank you. That'd be wonderful. In Jesus' name. Our Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for this opportunity. Father, we thank you for the blessing of technology. We thank you, Lord God, for the blessing of connection. Father, we thank you for this opportunity for Lori to share her book with the world, your love with the world. Father, we commit this recording into your hands. You're the Lord of the air. You're the Lord of the sea. You're the Lord of the land. You're the Lord overall. Father, we ask that this recording will go well. But beyond that, this recording will go far. We pray that all that listen to it will be blessed by it and will be drawn to you. And as a byproduct, more sales for this book and other books to come in the name of Jesus. We commit everything we do into your hands and we ask that you be glorified thereby. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. I enjoyed listening to Lori. Yeah. There truly was a simpler time in life. And it's nice to, you know, pull those up and share those experiences and those times with our children and with the children in our spheres of influence. You can find out more about Penny by ordering Lori's book. And like I said, the information is right below this. I'm sure you've already seen it. And I look forward to, you know, reading your comments on this video and other videos. And of course, joining you or you joining me. Well, whichever way, we'll be together. <laughs> Thank you again for being part of this episode. Bye now.